Alright guys, so today we're going to talk about how to get some stock market information or data uh, using a Python package. And uh, I got my coffee here, ready to go. Hopefully you guys are too. This is something that interests me a lot because I love the stock market and I love looking at data and investing in it and stuff. So this kind of is right up my alley. Um, hopefully you guys find this pretty neat too. But there is a package to go ahead and kind of scrape Yahoo Finance. Uh, if you don't know, Yahoo does have a division of Yahoo called Yahoo Finance, and they pretty much just do a lot of different analysis and get data on different stock market, uh, well, different stocks, I guess. Um, so we could, if we wanted to, theoretically scrape Yahoo Finance with Beautiful Soup, and I'll make a video about how to scrape websites in the future for sure. That's something I really enjoyed. Uh, but this makes it a lot easier for newbies because it pretty much does that for you with this package. And you don't have to worry about parsing through the HTML and going through and seeing uh, what data you want to grab. So it's pretty nice. So I'm on PyCharm and you need three different packages to run this. Uh, three that you need are Yahoo Fin, which is the main one. It's Yahoo fin don't do yahoo finance that is a different package you want the fin uh, another one is pandas okay and the last one that you need is let me find it. it's request html right here so those are the three packages that you will need in order to run this yahoo finance package um, but you know once you get that, you are all good to go. So let's go ahead and let's start looking at how to get stock market data. So first we're going to import Yahoo Fin dash stock info. Um, actually, let's just import everything. So from import, oh, okay. So we're importing everything from this package. Um, and First, we're going to need a ticker symbol. So if you don't know, a ticker symbol is just a, it's a, well, it's a symbol of a particular stock of a company. So uh, for example, let me look up Apple here in my other monitor. I'll bring it over. Um, if you're not sure what the ticker symbol is, what I would do is I'd put Apple stock. And you can do whatever company you want. So I would do like Microsoft stock or whatever have you. And then this NASDAQ colon and then AAPL, this right here is the ticker symbol of Apple. So let me show you another one. If we did Facebook, it'd be FB right here. So let's start with Apple and then we can kind of go from there. Um, so we can uh one of the things we can do is we can get the price of the stock so if you just saw let's let's go with facebook actually since i have it up facebook's price is 22 dollars 14 let's go ahead and get the price of that in code so we can get live price and then what we pass into this is actually the ticker symbol so fb for facebook now of course this isn't going to print anything out so if we want to see it we'll have to throw it in the print function so let's go ahead and run this and it usually takes a little bit of a second. You can see a little bit of delay. That's because it's actually going out there and it's scraping data and spitting it back out to us. So you can see uh, $22 and let me try to put it side by side and $13,999. So of course this just rounds it because <laughs> no one wants to read all of this on Google. Uh, so you can see how to get the price just like that. Pretty neat. Um, another thing you can do is get quote table we'll see what this shows us let's go ahead and run that and this just brings a JSON of all of the different data of this particular company uh, one thing in particular I like to look at is the dividend or you can also look at earnings per share that's pretty uh, pretty neat but dividend is something but Facebook does not pay a dividend um, so it's gonna say NA now if we did Apple Apple does pay a dividend and I think it's around uh, like one percent or something like that. We'll go ahead and see. We'll pass in a ticker symbol for Apple and run the same, same thing. Yeah, pays about one percent dividend yield a year, and that equates to about three dollars and eight cents. Um, so that's pretty neat. And another thing you can do 
with this package is let's say uh, we wanted all of the stocks in the S&P 500. So there's 500 top companies in the S&P 500, but of course we don't know all of those, right? Who, who in their right mind can name, I don't know what just happened, can name all of those companies? So what we can do is there's a function called tickers S&P 500. And what that'll do is it'll create a list of all of the S&P 500 ticker symbols, all of those companies. So here we go, you can see Apple's in there. Uh, so there are 500 companies here <laughs> in this list. And what's kind of neat, something you can do if you wanted to, uh, let's say you're wanting in your code, you're asking, uh, let's do it, okay? So stock is equal to input, and let's ask for a ticker symbol. Please enter a ticker symbol. Okay, I'm just kind of making this up on the fly. I didn't really prepare this. And let's say we're going to ask for a ticker symbol, and then we're going to respond if that stock is in the S&P 500. So what we can do is we can do if stock is in tickers S&P 500. I just did a video which talks about this in keyword, but essentially what it does is it just checks if this value is in this list. This list that this tickers S&P 500 will return. So if it's in there, we're going to print uh, the stock is in the S&P 500. Else, and we can just print not in the uh, S&P 500. Pretty simple, and uh, so let's go ahead and run this. Let's see what happens. Now, before I run it, I'm actually going to catch myself. I'm going to put a new line. <laughs> I didn't do it like I usually do, where I run it, and then I'm like, oh, I, c I can't continue. I got to fix that. Let's go down here and see this. Please enter a ticker symbol. Um, let me think of a stock. Let me see. It's AMD. I think AMD's ticker symbol is actually AMD. It is. So let's see if AMD. And mind you, it has to be capitalized. If you wanted to. Uh, you could do dot upper, all right? But we, we didn't really do that. You just gotta make sure that we enter in capitalized uh, format. Let's see if AMD is in, it is, okay. The stock is in the S&P 500, that's interesting. Let me think of something, I can't really think of one that I wouldn't think would be in the uh, S&P 500. Um, I'm sure Starbucks is, I wonder if Duncan Dunkin Donuts. I wonder if they are in. So there, I just looked it up in my other monitor, by the way. You guys can't see it, but their ticker symbol, let's run this again, is D-N-K-N. -N. So let's try it. D-N-K-N. -N. And it's not in the S&P 500. Okay. I didn't think it would be. I knew, I probably could guess that Starbucks is. Let me think. I think theirs is S-B-U-X. And it is in the S&P 500, but Dunkin' Donuts is not. So you can see that it works as expected. Anyway, this is how you get some stock information uh, from, you know, a package without having to go out and parse it yourself. So it makes it a lot easier, right? I can get stock information. I can make a whole function here if I wanted to. And how many lines is this? This is one, two, three, four, five lines of code versus I don't know how many it would take to get beautiful soup going and uh, get that stock information. It would take a lot more lines though, probably like a hundred, I would have to guess, um, just from my experience. But that is a really cool way you can get stock information uh, from a Yahoo Finance package. Hope you guys found this interesting. I really love this kind of stuff. And uh, I sure find it interesting. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.